Here's the brake master cylinder again and had a lot of trouble trying to free this union out of here. As you can see I was unsuccessful but it doesn't really matter because there's a new one. This one has one difference in that the push rod here is longer than on the original so what I've got to do is to take the push rod off the old one and put it onto the new one. So the dust cover is off and we can have a look underneath that main seal. It's pretty mucky under there. Lots of very nasty congealed brake grease I should think. It's red, it probably is. Uh, so we've got to clean that up and uh, get the little circ clip out of there somehow. So here are both the push rods off the new and the old master cylinder. This one's obviously the old and this one's the new and you can see the difference in length between them. So this being the one off the new master cylinder needs to be discarded and the one from the old master cylinder needs now to be fitted into the new master cylinder. So that was quite a simple job, fitting the old piston into the new master cylinder held in place there with the circlip. Here it is completed with the old push rod and the new seals in place. All that's left to do now is to put it back into the car. Another thing I needed to get of course was a pipe to connect the master cylinder to the fluid reservoir. And here it is, all bent into shape and ready to go in. That's the master cylinder back in the car with all the pipe work connected. What I need to do now is to refill and bleed the system. Ever since I've had the car, I've had a problem with starting. It began when I would leave the car for three or four days, maybe a week. I come to use it and the engine would turn over, but there wasn't enough power in the battery to spark it into life. I bought a new battery which cured the problem for a while but then it came back again. Then I bought this uh, battery charger here which keeps it charged up to 100% and also tells me that the alternator is working so I knew that wasn't at fault. I even got a battery isolator switch on here to save some power every time I got out of the car and started to carry a spare battery just in case. So I was never stranded. Um, anymore, but I hadn't really got to the cause of this problem. It wasn't running well when it was cold either, so I thought something was wrong and I may have found the answer. While I've been doing the brakes, I've been under the car with the brake pipes and while I was there, I found this underneath the frayed wiring of my alternator. I found this. That is the engine earth strap, which was not connected to anything. So this should be, I think, under the subframe mount here on the offside. So what I'm going to do is find a nice place to put that with some nice clean metal on the chassis. So hopefully that will solve my starting issues and my battery drain. Let's see. Here are all the things that I replaced on the car over the winter. Started off with the brake discs. As you can see, they, they're really rusty around the inside and outside and they were replaced first. And the calipers too were redone. The old calipers went off to be exchanged. And these are the old brake pads, which you can see needed replacing those two, so they were replaced with uh, these Mintex pads. MG, huh? Okay, and uh, also the 
the cylinders from the caliper. As you can see, these ones are pitted and rusted inside and out. So they came new with the reconditioned calipers. Also, um, the brake hoses, front brake hoses were replaced. This is one of the old braided ones. And I put uh, these Goodrich brake pipes, brake hoses on the front. Uh, also replaced was the brake fluid reservoir. That was full of nastiness and it's been replaced. Also, the final job on the brakes was the brake master cylinder, which had seen better days, and also a, a pipe from the cylinder to the reservoir. It's also new and on the car. Also, um, took the opportunity to do the front shock absorbers. These ones, as you can see, the bushes especially have really had it. And I think these were the original ones. It says Rover on the front there. And oil filled, of course. And this one too, they were very rusty and just weren't returning at all. So I put new Spax gas filled adjustable shock absorbers on the front uh, to match the new ones I put on the rear last year. So that's all the major mechanical work I had planned to do this winter. I'll be starting the car up in a few weeks at the end of March and when it's running about and the brakes have been tested, I'll go ahead and put the electric fuel pump in and also have a look at fitting electronic ignition. I'll be filming the car starting up from its uh, winter pause, so watch out for that. And we've got lots of trips planned and events planned for the spring and the summer. And I'll also film those and share those with you on the channel. So I hope you join me for those. Thanks a lot for watching the video so far and see you again soon.